city of Stockholm, with its wealth of both historic and modern values. Beneath this beautiful water of Lake Mellon, a tunnel is needed to connect parts of the city divided by the lake. On one side stood a Malm, resting on an Eska and a Rift Valley, home to artists and culture workers. On the other side, Riddarholmen, literally the Knight's Isle, with its 17th century castles, the church from the 13th century, and the old burial place of kings. The tunnel that will connect these two very sensitive areas is part of the City Line project, a six kilometer commuter train tunnel beneath central Stockholm. This project brings us many challenges, environmental considerations, engineering and logistic difficulties of a kind never seen before, the harsh Nordic winters, working beneath a cultural and historic city. Ahead of us lie seven challenges. Here we go. It would be impossible to construct a conventional tunnel beneath Lake Mellon, since its gradient would be too steep for trains. So, rather than the usual rock tunnel, an immersed tube tunnel placed on pile foundations will be constructed. The tunnel itself consists of three concrete elements that are connected to each other and to the rock tunnel connections on Sudamelestrand and Riddeholm. Because of the size of the elements, the outer steel shells can't actually be constructed on site in Söderström. And even if they could, it would mean too great a disturbance to the neighbouring city in terms of noise and heavy lorry traffic. So, instead they're being built here, at a shipyard in Tallinn. About 100 metres long, 20 metres wide and 10 metres high, each part weighs around 900 tonnes when empty. The steel shells add to the durability of the tunnel and since the tunnel must last for 120 years, engineers must be certain to calculate the amount of rust eating into the metal. That is why the steel shell is about 10 millimetres thick to allow for 5 millimetres of corrosion over the lifetime of the tunnel. When the steel elements were built, they had to be towed across the Baltic Sea, and even then through the Sudetelia lock. After what felt like an eternity of administration and waiting for international permissions, one problem was left to be solved. The size of the lock was too narrow for the elements. It's finally here, the steel shell for tunnel element one has arrived in Stockholm. It's been one year in the planning and manufacturing, and finally it's managed to successfully cross the Baltic. It's an exceptional load, something which has never been passed through the lock before. Okay, the next couple of meters are the most critical. If we get past this bridge with the front piece of this, everything else will go fine. But this is a very tight and narrow spot here. And this is where we've had to measure everything to within millimeters to make sure they fit through. So here we go, take a deep breath. With the element safely guided through the lock, it's time to unload it from the barge. To do so, ballast tanks are filled with water to immerse the barge. This barge has had to be modified. Underneath the deck of the barge, the, the barge is manufactured in, in sections and com, in tanks. We can flood the, the compartment from the water in Lake Mellon to gradually control and make the barge slowly sink until it settles on the bed of Lake Mellon. And at that point, the steel shell achieves its own buoyancy and floats away independently. The prime difficulty here is the stability of the barge.
but it did sink gently to the bed of the lake, carefully releasing the tunnel element. It was a success. The concrete casting of the elements can't all be made on site because it would cause unnecessary distress to our neighbouring city. This is solved by casting in two stages. The first stage here, in Undros, outside Sudatelia, where a mooring facility has been built. Here the bottom slabs are cast, as well as parts of the wall and roof. The elements can't be allowed to sink more than six metres due to limitations in the water depth on the way to Sudamelestrand, so it's not possible to cast it all here. Lake Mellon, a freshwater reservoir and supply for the city, plays a big part in Stockholmers' lives. When the work is done, all life here shall resume as if never interrupted, only better. The cold, clean water must still be clean for the happy Stockholmers to bathe in, to fish in, not only the water and the coast, but the birds, fish and all the animals must be treated with an utmost respect. This means that we must make certain that our work activities must not affect the surrounding water. Temporary concrete and steel walls reach from the bedrock to the water surface creating dry areas so that the connections on Sudamela Strand and Ridderholmen can be constructed. The main risk here, where the immersed tunnel will connect with the southern part, is the low slope stability. The solution? A retaining wall made of secant piles. There is some very complex work to be executed here on Sudamela Strand. And because of drill and blast this close to the residential area in this culturally rich part of the city, extra special care needs to be taken with noise and vibrations. And of course, there's always the traffic to consider. The helicopters need to be able to fly and land at the helipad nearby, so we have to limit the area of the construction site. The bicycle and pedestrian paths must be kept accessible, as well as the road for cars. To achieve this, two temporary pathways are built, one for cars and one for pedestrians. Those structures are both flexible and mobile. On Ridderholmen, there's a different set of problems to be solved. The connections need to be built in the water, hence a cofferdam. Problems also arise due to the fact that heavy traffic is not allowed here. This is solved by transporting all material and equipment by boats to Riddleholm. But this is the oldest part of Stockholm and historic relics have to be taken into account. The archaeologists and builders work side by side while excavating this site. The archaeologists were able to find over 800 items the biggest an anchor, the smallest a coin of eight ur, giving insights into people's life and culture. The most interesting artifact found was an old snuff box with an inscription and from this inscription it was actually possible to trace the owner's life history through church records. Building the supports underwater for the tunnel to rest upon caused several difficulties. The steel core piles are drilled into the rock 40 metres below the water surface. Around these piles, the concrete foundations are cast at depths of 22 metres. While working underwater, the divers must face the very harsh coldness of the Nordic winter. 
here enhanced by underwater streams. Finally, the arrival of the first tunnel element. Uh, here we are standing on tunnel element one. It's now here in the heart of Stockholm. This is going to be the casting location for the rest of the concreting work on tunnel element one. When we finish casting the concrete here, we will move the tunnel element to a mooring position that we're manufacturing now out of big steel casings uh, on the other side of Riddefjärden. This is the heart of Scandinavia. Consider the full energy of this artery pulsating. This is not only building a tunnel, this is connecting the southern and northern parts of the country. And finally, the day of the immersion is here. Prior to the immersion, the tunnel section is rigged to make it possible to lower it carefully in a controlled manner. Two pontoons are placed alongside the tunnel section, one on each side. Two cross beams are placed over the tunnel element resting on the pontoons. With winches and cables attached to the cross beams and various mooring points, both on land and in the water, it's possible to pull the tunnel section into its final position. The commander unit is placed on one of the pontoons. It collects data from the sensors located both on the element and ashore and makes it possible to execute the immersion with precision. In each tunnel section, there are three ballast tanks that can be filled with water to weigh the element down and create balance. From the commander unit, it's possible to adjust the amount of water pumped into the tanks. With careful monitoring, the element can thus be moved slowly. By as little as a millimetre at a time, even although this is a very reliable operation, I believe everyone held their breath until the tunnel element was in its final place. When all three of the tunnel elements have been immersed, they are connected to each other and to the connections on each side with temporary joints. We have one shot at doing this right. There is no second chance. These temporary joints are made out of thick rubber gaskets to prevent water leaking into the tunnel when working on the final joint. With the temporary joints in place, the tunnel steel shell is welded together so that the tunnel becomes dense. Now it's possible to move the walls between the three parts from the inside. Finally, the joints are reinforced and cast permanently in concrete and now there's an open tunnel between Ridderholmen and Sudermalm. The builders secure the tunnel to prevent it from resurfacing by putting a metre thick layer of crushed stone on the roof as well as by casting concrete inside the tunnel. When the tunnel is secure, the water is pumped out of the tanks inside the tunnel sections. The tunnel can't be fastened to the bottom supports because it must be allowed to move with the temperature fluctuations in the water. Although it's firmly anchored in the rock on the south side, it is still flexible for longitudinal movement in the joint house at Ridderholmen. It took a workforce of 1,200 different people from 30 different countries, spending 2.3 million man-hours over six and a half years to accomplish it. And so, our team takes enormous pride in adding another project to our list of accomplishments. And 
a rather successful one at that, if I might say so myself. Now, let's continue solving engineering challenges around the world.